Hi there, I'm Aaron from Solus, and today I'm going to explain what the reactor pattern is, uh, how it's used to build high-performance multi-threaded applications, and uh, take a look at some source code uh, using one of our Java APIs. Okay, so if you don't know what the reactor pattern is, here is a uh, slide from one of the uh, developer workshops that I run. Uh, it's a design pattern, uh, typically used in very kind of I.O. heavy uh, applications. Uh, Nginx, the web server, for example, uses this pattern uh, a lot. So essentially what it does is, let's, let's zoom in a little bit here so we can uh, take a look at my little uh, explanation here. So let's say you have a process that's listening to incoming requests and having to respond to them, you know, stuff that a web server does, for example. Uh, these incoming requests could be in the form of TCP packets, if this was a TCP socket. These could be messages uh, in a solace context coming in here and needing a response. Now, if the thread that's listening to these, this socket or listening to this data coming in is actually doing the processing and the responding, what happens as the load starts to go up? What happens if some of these uh, requests take a while to process? Well, it will jam up the rest of these requests. It won't be as reactive uh, to, the, to the incoming requests. So the reactor pattern uh, says, all right, instead of doing that, we'll have a bunch of worker threads. These are application controlled. These can scale up or scale down. And these will be doing the work uh, instead. The processing will be done here. And this uh, event loop now essentially just delegates or dispatches the processing uh, as it comes in, you know, as it receives the request, it passes it off to these backend worker threads and they do the hard work. Thereby keeping this event loop very lightweight, very responsive and very reactive. So that's what we're gonna build uh, today using Solace. Now, if you came at this from a microservices kind of view, you could think of these, maybe these workers as individual microservices, and these could be listening to messages on a non-exclusive queue, for example. Um, or, you know, if you want to build a multi-threaded application uh, that you want to build the threading inside the app, which is what we're gonna do today, uh, we're gonna talk about how to do that. So let's just uh, zoom out a bit here, move that over to the side, get, get rid of that. So let's say, for example, uh, we have Whoop, let me just scroll that over there. There we go. So let's say this here is Solace and it is sending messages from publishers, from requesters into our application. So this is our app here. It will be using a Solace uh, API. This in this case will be JCSMP. And then there'll be you know, the client code, right? So the actual application uh, space. So what happens as messages are received by the API, there is a uh, thread here, this is called the, the reactor thread, that takes these messages and puts them onto an internal uh, dispatch queue, a dispatch notification queue, and kind of fills up messages here. So messages are going into this thread, or into this queue here. There's another thread called the notification queue, the consumer notification queue, and it's this queue that actually reads messages from this internal uh, this internal buffer here and dispatches them up to the application space using the on receive method. So this is in your application code. This is where you actually implement your logic on how you want to process messages when they're received. Now the basic replier sample application that we're gonna be looking at today does the processing here inside the on receive and then responds back but instead what we're going to do is we're gonna build this into a multi-threaded application. And the way we're gonna do that is by simply inserting another, um, yep, please go back, there we go. Another small uh, blocking queue here to put some messages into. And we're gonna have a bunch of application threads that will fire up at the beginning of the application that are going to be listening to this blocking queue, taking data off of there. So now our on receive, which is technically running on site, you know, on this uh, on the API thread, it will essentially just put messages into this link blocking queue and then you know return back. So keeping the on receive very lightweight, very much like that event loop in the reactor pattern, and all of the processing is going to be done in these application threads, and these application threads will then be responding back, uh, you know, to these incoming requests. So this is a request reply pattern. Uh, and this is how we're gonna be doing it. Now in Solace, uh, pretty much any thread, any application thread can respond to messages. So it doesn't matter uh, that we're responding in a different thread than what we're receiving on. So 
So that's what we're going to build. I'm just going to switch back over here to my uh, code. So this is, uh, this is Eclipse, and this is the basic replier sample. I'll put a link in the description down below. Very quickly, let's walk through it. Uh, where it starts, here's our main. We read some command line arguments and makes this class. Basically builds ourselves a properties object, instantiates the session with our, our host name, our username, our password, uh, creates, uh, configures a topic that we're gonna be listening on, a very basic producer for handling incoming, uh, because it's a direct messaging app, these, uh, these methods will never actually be run. And this is essentially where the logic is. So when it receives a message on receive, uh, we check to make sure that it's a uh, reply to message. And we say, okay, we've got this uh, request, we're gonna generate a response, a very simple little basic sample response, and then it sends the reply. That is all that this does. So very, very simple uh, little sample application to respond to uh, incoming requests. Now I actually have a requester running in the back here. This is SDK perf. For those that know SDK perf, this is the command line publishing on that request topic, lots of messages, and this dash PRT means that I want a reply to uh, published with there. So it makes it a reply to. And if we run this, you'll see that it starts up, connects, and then essentially just starts responding. One is, once per second, it's receiving an incoming request, and there we go, generating a response. So this is what we're going to base our sample on. So I've taken this code and I've multi-threaded it. So let's go into the, take a look at that. I've added a few more things as well. Because Solace has built-in logging, I'm using log for j here in this sample. Uh, this is my little uh, blocking queue that I'm gonna be using that my on receive will be published into. I've made it quite small, only 100 messages. Uh, I have a uh, thread number and a thread pool uh, of size five. Here's my little thread factory. We give our threads a name and make sure that they're daemon threads so that they exit when the main thread uh, exits. And then the on receive, uh, I basically took and broke out into a little uh, runnable uh, class here. So basically took the code exactly as it is, uh, pulls messages instead of on receive, it's now pulling messages off that internal queue and says, hey, I've got a message. I'm gonna respond to it with my little sample request. I did actually modify the uh, request received to include the name, the name of this particular Runnable. So when I instantiate each replier object, I give it a name so that we know that it's, uh, we can see that it's actually multi-threaded and multi-threading. The rest of the code looks very, very similar. Reading command line arguments, and then up here builds our properties object, connects the session, uh, configures the topic. And this is my on receive. And you can see that the on receive now is very, very small. Essentially all it does is it takes that request message and sticks it into this blocking queue, a blocking put, because in JCSMP, because of that two threads, you know, the, the reactor thread and the dispatch thread, we're allowed to do blocking calls inside the callback. If you were doing this in C Sharp or in C, um, or some of our other APIs where you're actually, uh, the callback is the actual uh, reactor thread, uh, you can't do a blocking call. You need to do something a little bit more complicated. I'll probably make that another video that kind of explains all that. Then finally, I execute, uh, you know, fire up five of those repliers. I say, okay, let's make some new repliers and start it up, and that basically is all it does. So let's go ahead and run this, and we should see here that uh, first thing it does is it connects, connecting to host, connected, creates a couple of repliers, one, two, three, four, and five. You can actually see that it's creating them on the main thread, but then when they actually start, replier one, replier three, the thread name, so I've actually, you know, because I've changed the thread name, you can actually see that the thread name corresponds to each replier. And then as it's requesting or getting these responses, requests coming in, you can see that it's dispatching them to the various uh, replier objects. So we have these five different replier threads sitting there blocking on that uh, internal queue and being able to process these things uh, you know, in parallel. Right now they're not because it's going so slow, but if we cranked up the rates now, we now have a multi-threaded replier application each of these five threads could be processing the, uh, the responses and requests and responding to them in parallel. So thereby increasing the performance uh, significantly. So that's about it. I'll put some uh, links in the code, uh, the code links down in the description below. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel uh, for more videos like this. Be sure to head over to the Solace community and ask any questions there. 
And uh, yeah, thanks a lot and see you next time.